Many people think the city of Liverpool sprung up around the river, with shipping in and out of the port bringing in both people and money. But surprisingly, it was preceded by one of its suburbs into the Doomsday Book, where the trees said to be as old as any place in the country for which records survive. The village is full of legends, and I met up with Mike Chitty from the Wavertree Society for a guided tour of the area. Well, the Monk's Well is one of the oldest structures in Wavertree. Right. Um, in fact, the name Wavertree is thought to be to mean the place by the common pond, mm. and it seems as though the, the source of water supply um, nearby was the reason why Wavertree grew up in the first place as a village. There's a number of other explanations. Some people think the name waver tree meant a, a tree, you know, a wavering tree, yeah, yeah. which sounds pretty obvious. Yeah. And another explanation is that it meant a clearing in a wood. So, pays your money, takes your choice. But I prefer the place by the common pond because yeah. the Monk's Well has the date 1414. Yeah. Um, there's two inscriptions on it. One at the top on the cross, God gives man drinks. Right. And the Latin inscription below has been translated as he who here does naught bestow, the devil laughs at him below. <laughs> and uh, whether it was the inscription that gave rise to the legends or the legends that led to the inscription, yeah, we're not yeah. sure. Um, the story was that there was a, a monastery of some kind behind here. Hence the name Monk's Hence Well. Hence the name yeah. Monk's Well. Yeah. And uh, you were supposed to leave a donation for the monks yeah. after drawing the, the water. But in fact, I've, I've checked quite a few old maps and records and there's very little evidence that there ever was a monastery of any kind in Wavertree. Um, you can actually see, looking at the well, get some idea what it used to look like because yeah. this pointed arch was once open mm. and you could go into there, there were a couple of steps down and the source of water was a natural spring which right. welled up into a, a rectangular stone basin at the bottom. Yeah. In fact, this wasn't the original site of the Monk's Well. The original site was about 100 yards or so further back. Really? But, oh, uh, it's moved. <laughs> well, about, it was moved as long ago as 1768, yeah. the time of the Wavertree Enclosure Act. And uh, there was a big house behind at that time called Lake House. Right. The owner of Lake House was a bit fed up with all the villages of Wavertree traipsing across his front lawn to draw water from the spring. So he actually had the well moved alongside Mill Lane here and uh, there was a tunnel there for bringing the water from the original spring to the well. Towards the middle of the original lake there is a quite an interesting stone. I noticed that with the S on it. Shall yeah. we, shall we have a yeah, look Yeah, let's go and have a look. Yeah. Now if you look down here Helen you see the letter S. Yeah. Standing for Salisbury in the crown above. Yeah. Lord Salisbury was the lord of the manor of Wavertree. And in the 1850s, he was in dispute with the township of Wavertree. Um, they proposed at that time to tidy up the area, yeah. um, plant trees around the edge of the lake. But Lord Salisbury sent his agents in the middle of the night to put what were called mere stones or boundary stones around the edge of what he regarded as his property. But the people of the township said, no, it was common land and they were entitled to do what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Well. The, the dispute was settled, he allowed them to plant the trees, although I believe he never did give up his claim to, uh, to ownership of the lake. And when the lake was filled in, um, this was left really as, a, as a, um, just an interesting relic of the past. So this would have been in the middle of the water then? Um, no, apparently. Some people say it used to mark the centre of the lake, okay. but I believe it was actually one of a series around the edge of the lake. It doesn't say it was a called a mere stone, a boundary stone, yeah. uh, marking the edge of Lord Salisbury's property. Whereabouts are we now? What road are well, we on now? We're in the North Drive. We just walked up from the Monk's Well. Right. And this was called Victoria Park. Yeah. It was um, laid out in the, in the 1860s yeah. as uh, a fairly exclusive, as you'll see by looking at the size of the houses here, yeah. quite an exclusive residential area. Um, this pair of houses were built in 1867 yeah. for a man called Patrick O'Connor and he was an ironmonger, he had a business premise, uh, business premises, a shop on the high street and he was like many other traders, he was one of the people who moved out from the busy high street into these sort of almost rural surroundings mm. of Victoria Park. Um, he commissioned this pair of semi-detached houses to be built and the reason they're well known and the reason why they're called today, one of them is called Urn Mount, yeah. is because when the foundations were being dug, the workmen came across some um, pottery remains, some urns, 
and they thought they would contain possibly gold coins, so they started smashing them up yeah. and looking for more. Um, fortunately, the local building surveyor came along just in time, and he managed to salvage two mm. of these urns intact, and they proved to be Bronze Age burial urns, oh showing that people have been living in Wavertree for an awfully long time. They've been dated to somewhere between 1000 and 1600 BC. So this would have been a, a burial ground then? It would have been. It's, it's, uh, they're, they're always called today the Wavertree urns. The two that were rescued are mm. now in Liverpool Museum. Yeah. And um, yes, it, it's described as a, as a burial site. Interestingly, um, few others or no, no others have been found uh, in the vicinity. Right. And it was just a chance discovery. Perhaps. Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, and inside these urns, there were, there were the remains of um, burnt bone yeah, and also yeah. a couple of flint arrowheads. Right. So they are among the, the very few you know, Bronze Age remains discovered in the, in the whole Merseyside area. Hello.